Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Marduk, and today we are going to make our way further into the Water Temple here, and a couple things to note is that you may have noticed, based on the couple switches that we flipped earlier in our way into the Water Temple, that there's going to be a bit of the whole flipping switches and unlocking doors and things of that sort. That is very much the theme of the Water Temple. It is, as we're soon going to find out, in many ways, sort of a puzzle in and of itself, and so, one moment, we'll take a couple of chests here, where we get a sapphire. Sapphires are random gems of any color other than red, the most popular and powerful color being deep blue. Oh, looks like we looked out there, seems as though this is a deep blue sapphire. They're mystically associated with mind and spirit, magic, intellect, water. Okay, so that'll be worth taking a closer look in a second. We have another fight against exclusively Angry Cods here. So as a reminder, these guys, I assume, are very resistant to water, yes. And a little bit of defense for physical attacks, but nothing for magic attacks. So what is our preference here? Solar, of course, could use Solar Flare for a magic attack, but alternatively, for physical attacks, even if there's a little bit more defense there, this is still Earth Elemental, which would be particularly effective against these guys. So give this a shot, maybe. Ooh, still not enough, though. So we will get a chance to all take turns here and significantly slow down Vern and deal a fair bit of damage to Donovan. Fortunately, we have enough water resistance that those water spells are not so bad. Donovan, though, uh, fire is maybe not the best option against these guys, I'm assuming. They do have some resistance to it. So maybe we go with a physical attack and try to finish off the one that we've already damaged. Seems like that might be the way to go. Still not enough, though. Okay. Yikes. Mardak, do you have enough damage to take one out single-handedly? Say one with 577 HP, or do we need you to attack one that's practically done already? Let's take a chance here. Okay, well, he crit, so we certainly can do it that way. As for Vern, I think you also have typically been one of our higher damage characters, so let's try this here. Also, certainly enough damage. So Solar, I think you take the one with the low HP here, because you don't have enough, enough damage to take out this one, and ooh. Okay. Fair bit of damage on Marduk, yes. Fortunately, we are right next to a safe crystal, so I suppose not the end of the world if we take a lot of damage here. So we'll hit it with Donovan and Marduk as well. That should do the trick, especially if Marduk continues to crit. Okay, and fish scales. Yeah, not so relevant anymore, but also picking up some additional coins after spending a bunch with Goat. Not a bad thing there either. The other thing is, I think it probably does make sense for us to swap out some of our party members here. We were working with Vern, Solar, and Donovan for a while in Crimson Peak, and at least in Donovan's case, I think it was a tough sell using him in Crimson Peak when we knew that he was not going to be dealing much damage, because he's primarily dealing fire damage against fire enemies that are very resistant to that. And in the Water Temple, he's not going to be dealing that much damage, and is also going to be pretty vulnerable with him being a fire character himself. So, I think it is probably time for us to swap some people around again, and trying to think of balancing out people who we haven't seen very much of, and also, to the extent that we can, simultaneously choosing people who are particularly effective in this given area. For example, Gloria is quote-unquote the correct choice, I think indisputably, in that she is one of our most consistent Earth damage dealers, of course is also Earth Elemental herself, so I think that's probably the obvious choice here, putting her back in. And then for Vern, uh, technically Vern does have earth damage on green lightning, and Solar does have the earth damage on the physical attacks. So you could make a case for keeping them in, but like I was saying, I think we probably do want to get some new people in. We haven't seen much of Charla as of late, so maybe it's time to get Charla back in the action. So maybe we swap in Charla for Vern. And then Slinic. When was the last time we had Slinic? Also, Earth Elemental, although I don't think he has much in the way of Earth Elemental attacks. We have picked up, I think, at least one, if not two, possibly even three, new axes that Slinic has not yet had the chance to use. That maybe is reason enough to throw them in as well. So, let's take a look then, gear-wise. Yeah, these people are definitely not going to be all that geared up. So, I think for Slinic, it probably makes sense if you haven't already learned the abilities for you to, say, use Trilobite Armor here. 
Have you mastered Resist Water? You've not? Well, not a better time than right now. Other than that, this is probably a good opportunity for others to start using those Spirit Bangles that we picked up some from Scope not long ago. And other than that, maybe some Water Pendants too. So let's just double check as to who has them right now. And well, Solar is hogging a lot of the Water Pendants, so let's maybe just take those off for the time being. And maybe we'll throw those on Gloria, maybe we'll put them on someone else. Uh, other than that, the Bengals. Burns hogging those. So I think that is definitely something we're going to want on Gloria, because Gloria has not yet mastered no water, and that's going to be another reason for using her here. Gloria, I would say, across the board, is just one of the most versatile characters in that she has no both water and earth, so useful defensively in both water areas and earth areas, and water and earth damage from her spells, not to mention does have the air staff that we've not yet swapped over to. Oh, she hasn't even mastered the abilities on the trilobite staff yet, so it's going to be hard to do that here, perhaps, because I'm not going to have too many opportunities to use Whirlpool, at least. No water, yes. Oh, in fact, I'll tell you what, if she can learn no water from the trilobite staff, then she doesn't necessarily need to have the Sapphire Bangle. Maybe it's preferable for her to use some water pendants, at least one. Maybe even two. And we could throw on her own chest plate, although she has already mastered everything on that. Is Mardek hogging anything? In his inventory, maybe something like the lesser rainbow shirt. Mardek has mastered now rainbow aura, so putting that on Gloria would be a reasonable idea. That, of course, also will give some water resistance as well, so it'd be up over 100% water resistance in this case, which is certainly not a bad thing, but might be more worthwhile to spread things out in terms of water resistance across numerous characters. We'll have to see exactly how much we have. So that's Gloria. Then outside of Gloria, we were talking about trying to get Sharla. And Sharla, well, we were, of course, doing the security demon fight not long ago. And so these are things that we had left over from that. And that was sort of a specific purpose that we were using you for in that case. And I think now, this is a very different set of circumstances in which we'll have other things to put on you, so we'll just give you the weapon, and other than that, are there other things that we want to make sure you get the chance to master? Of course, already learned everything from Dark Rogue, who were one of the first users in that case. Have you learned anything from the Night Jacket yet? You have not, and this is, of course, first and foremost a Dark Resistance item, yes, but it does still give 20% water resistance, so that's not a bad option, especially considering that Charlotte is not able to wear some of the medium and heavy armor, such as the Trilobite armor, so can't get the best possible chest plate for this purpose, but this is a reasonable substitute, I think. Other than that, maybe you're the one who should use the Spirit Bangles, so let's swipe one from Vern, and maybe could even put on a second one, or possibly a Lapis Lily, which also gives 50% water resistance, in addition to a little bit of resistance to Silence and Curse. I'm trying to think of what the possibility is of us getting either of those statuses inflicted on us here, and generally speaking, each element has one or two statuses that is something that tends to go along with it. For example, for fire damage, Numb tends to be the thing that is most closely tied to it. That's why we see characters like Donovan tend to have fire skills as well as remove numb. Paralysis for air. I think it might be silence that tends to go along with water. And so for that reason, it might not be a bad idea to say put on the lapis lily for Sharla. Other than that, hmm, let's take a look here at where that leads us. So it is Slinik who's the next person we'll want to gear up, but he already has the trilobite armor, meaning that we're at over a hundred percent for everyone except for Mardek, and Mardek, if we double check on his abilities, does still have resist water for magic defensive reactions, and nothing for physical defensive reactions for water, but that is still pretty solid. We could, say, take off the Evening Star for the time being and throw on another one of the water pendants or Sapphire Bangle. Should have another one of these at least lying around, so that's definitely an option, and we took away his chest plate, so could even throw on another trilobite armor. We know that he's definitely mastered this ability already, but uh, that could just, for the purposes of 
giving us as much water resistance as possible would be a reasonable route to take. So why don't we do that? So we go back to item storage and throw on... We'll have to see where we have it, but I think maybe Vern? Yeah, at one point in time, not so long ago, was wearing that. And that allows Marduk to continue to use double AP. So we probably don't need to actually equip the resist water reaction. Just having the trilobite armor itself on alone is enough to get 110% water resistance on top of the 50% resistance we're getting from the water pendant. So now let's just check skills real quick and see if there's anything we want to activate that we did not have activated before. And I don't think offensively we could swap some things around for Marduk. Like get rid of undead and throw on spirit. I don't think we're gonna find any undead enemies down here, but maybe it's slightly more likely we'll find spirits. For the most part, I think that's not going to be terribly relevant either way. Could throw on resist dark. Yeah, and Marduk has not yet mastered that, so that at least sounds good. Uh, could we do something to get on 20% evasion? We got rid of damage soak and minus 10%. Then is that better or worse than 20% evasion? Maybe we stick with 20% evasion there. Seems like that might be slightly better for us. Resist water, like we were saying before, that is definitely preferable here. And then also, we could throw on the rainbow ore for even more water resistance here. But I think, for the most part, and likewise throw on resist water as well. So this would be the way to totally double down on water resistance. He's one RP away from being able to equip both of these simultaneously. So if we wanted to, we could do that and have Marduk just heal exorbitant amounts whenever he gets hit with water damage. But I think already, when he's more than 100% resistant to water, he's not taking damage from water, and that is the key thing. We don't need him to be healing a bunch from it. So I think we'll be fine here. That allows us to continue to master double AP, which will still take a while. Could possibly get rid of clarity if we thought that there was another option here that was preferable, like do we think that sleep is likely to happen or paralysis? I don't think paralysis. Curses, zombification. Maybe sleep? Again, I don't remember what the most common statuses are that tend to go along with water, but I think it is largely silent, so we could throw this on or perhaps just MP or HP. Maybe let's go that route instead. As for Charlotte, we have not much in the way of offensive reactions, but on the magic side of things, you have not yet mastered resist water. So it might be worth putting on one of those pendants, because, I mean, Resist Fire is not going to be doing too much over here. So what if we, say, swapped around a Water Pendant and a Bangle, so that at least the people who have not yet learned Resist Water can learn Resist Water. Now's as good a time as any, so we'll swap this around here. And then it would be nice if we could put on either Resist Dark, just so that you can master that, because that's a powerful skill, maybe not super applicable here, but long term, that'd be something that'd be great to have. Likewise, with double gold, uh, that would be even more of a time commitment, though, and I don't know just how long we're expecting to have Sharla with us. Let's stick with Dark for now, and I think the other thing is there are other helmets that we'll probably want to swap on for Sharla, because this is currently coming from that crown that at one point in time we were using just for giving her plus one agility, but I think there are some other helmets that give offensive magic reactions that she might not yet have learned, so could end up getting rid of that crown very soon. As for Slinic, doing fine with offensive reactions. On magic side of things, you also have not yet mastered resist water, so if we can get another water pendant for you, I think we would need to get it out of storage somewhere, but I'm assuming that is something that is doable. I'm pretty sure we have enough lying around here. Just a matter of who currently has it. Here, Donovan has one. Okay, great. So we'll swipe that. And then Slinic will be even higher in terms of water resistance. Again, was already over 100 because he was using Trilobite armor. But I suppose it's still good to go absolutely bonkers with water resistance, which will be what happens here with Slinic. Let's just make sure we also activate this as well. Probably get rid of air. Don't expect that to be too relevant here. We could squeeze in one more thing. Now, Slinic has mastered double gold, so if we wanted to, we could go crazy here, have Marduk use it, Slinic use it, and then Sharla use it as well, and that's the way that you get 
crazy amounts of gold if you are making a point of farming that up. And we are very low on it at the moment, so you could make a case for it. But I think there are enough other things at the moment that we're also trying to do that we can pass on it for the time being. Likewise, what is the best status to deliberately try to avoid? Yes, we can go with sleep for Slenic. Okay, and then that leaves us with just Gloria here. And she is very low on reactions, actually. Wow, I'm surprised, because we've used her, it seems, fairly often. So that means that something that costs 10 RP, like Rainbow Ore, is not the worst idea. Okay, and it only takes 50 go-rounds relative to, say, some other 10 RP abilities, like double gold or double AP. Okay, so let's just save real quick. So we have all that stuff primed and ready to go. And now, we take a look at our map, there's actually another chest in the top right corner. Let's pick that up before we head out of here. Oh, I, I believe that was a mirror elixir, however, I clicked the button twice in rapid succession. So, as for where we go next, this is the area where we went in initially, and I believe we flipped all the switches there. There's one in the bottom right corner that is blocked by a white barrier, and then we have four other options through any of these other doors, and I think what we will find is there are even more of these switches for us to flip. And the tricky thing is, we saw this a little bit in the Serpent Slayer, if you can remember that back in Lifewood, that on some occasions we are going to want those switches flipped, on other occasions we are actually going to want them unflipped. Which is why this is a real brain teaser to go through here, is that it's not just going to be as simple and straightforward as, okay, flip all the switches and we're done. We're going to have to go back and forth with a combination of flipping and unflipping to eat our way through some areas. So this area is very difficult to navigate, the most difficult to navigate in the game. So we'll see what we can do here. So let's go through this door here. And honestly, this door blends in with the scenery. You can barely tell that it's there. Let's take this chest, give us a phoenix down. And that's the other thing is we definitely don't have all the items we might want to have on our characters right now. Oh, and Slinic. We were just saying earlier that Slinic definitely has new axes that we've not yet used. I'm not sure we have them directly in Slinic's inventory right now, but maybe Marduk does. I'm thinking of all those bone axes we picked up, and we sold a few of them recently, but hold on. Okay, we do have one here, I was gonna say. Gotta at least have one of them on hand, right? So we can throw this on here, and let's double check in terms of just raw damage. It is a 5 damage upgrade from 35 to 40, and it gives the Perforate skill and the Quarry Beast skill. Let's throw that on. Oh, and Slinic actually doesn't have a second miscellaneous item either, so we can certainly put one in there. I think Slinic was previously using an Emerald Bangle, which is, of course, primarily an Earth Resistance item, but also gives 20% HP, which I think we were recently saying that Slinic could probably use a second ability so we were talking about, do we really want Insomni? We've already mastered it. Oh, except it costs one too many RP. Hmm, okay. In that case, maybe we try to find something else that Slinic has not yet learned that we could put in its place. Has Slinic learned locomotion yet? No, I'm not necessarily sure that that's something we're gonna see happening too often. I don't think that Slinic is going to get paralyzed in here, but just for the long-term purpose of mastering another resistance. Sure, let's put it on and it gives a little bit of additional agility, so that's helpful too. Okay, so here we find that, well, there's a bridge, a green bridge at that, and what is on the other side of said bridge? Seemingly plenty of chests, maybe more so over to the left. Okay, here is a turquoise switch. So what you'll see is basically when you have the switches active, you can unlock doors. When you have the switches unactive, you can cross bridges. And that is why there is a combination of flipping and unflipping these switches that is going to be difficult for us to uh, get done properly the first time around, but we'll just do our best here and see if we can get done. So combination of eye orbs and eye orb spawn. And hmm, now that we have a new group of people here, what is our preferred way to take these guys out? So these guys are very resistant to water. We know that. A little bit resistant to fire, light, and dark. But they are weak to earth and a little bit to air. So that's helpful for Sharla. She certainly could use things like lightning bolts. 
perhaps take people out quickly that way. Let's give this a shot. 300 damage is not a ton, especially when these guys will go next. However, water spells, they're not bad. Confusing Slimic is very concerning, though. Fortunately, with his random attack, opted to attack one of the enemies rather than an ally, because Slimic is more than capable of taking out, say, Gloria or maybe even Sharla in one hit. So Gloria with the Razor Leaf, I think that is going to be our primary way of dealing damage against the Ior. 400 or so. That's something, but maybe not ideal. Could probably get rid of the Ior spawn with Marduk in one turn. So his big eyeball will go now. But with so many water resistances, we're actually healing everyone there. So that is the benefit of loading up on all that. And Sharla, is it preferable? for you to use magic abilities here, or physical abilities. I wonder, maybe physical? If you have Soul Strike, which I'm assuming you do, then this will actually turn into an air elemental attack. And that's pretty close to what you were dealing before. And again, Slimic actually lost the confusion there, but in the process attacked the Eye Orb. So I think it was technically still under the effect of the confusion that Slimic made that attack. So I think we still lucked out considerably. Of the four targets he could have chosen, opted to choose the enemy, so that was great. Then, same story, in fact, with Gloria. I think you also have Soul Strike, so if you hit your reaction here, then it might be better to use a physical attack. Okay, and Marduk, can you deal enough damage to take it out? Yes, but only if you crit, and you do. Okay, some more Crystal Tears. And let's return to our hub room of sorts over here. And I suppose we could heal just because we can. Might as well also take a look at what other axes we will eventually want to use. Because Slimic, I think you do have a few options here. Just want to double check as to who is hogging those axes right now, because they're not in Slimic's inventory. Or what's it mean? Yes. The Mighty Axe that we got from the shop in Aeropolis. That is one of the ones that I'm thinking of here. Let's double check. It has Boost and Quarry Insect. So, also slightly more damage. Could potentially be reason to prioritize this over the Bone Axe, but... Perf rate on the Bone Axe. We'll have to take a closer look as to what exactly that does in our next fight. But uh, any other axes, my guess is that was probably it in terms of one of the ones I was thinking of before. This is the original axe, the great axe. So I think we're all set on that front. Yeah. And then the sun axe we were using that previously. Okay. Good. So now let's try going through here. See what we can do on this side. Let's take a look at our map. And if we were to say go down here and across these bridges, we could of course take these chests, which we might as well do. Another water pendant. I think we've loaded up on enough of these that we can more or less put them on everyone that we feel like we might want to put them on, but useful no less to get another. And a bottle of acid is the earth elemental damaging potion. And that is helpful because most enemies in the water temple are weak to earth. So is there anyone in particular who is not able to deal earth damage? And I think the answer would be anyone other than Gloria. So in the case we're putting this on almost anyone, but Slinic works. And if we head down this way, if we say we're to flip this switch here, and are there any other switches that we can activate in this area? I think we've been through a similar spot before. In fact, we were in this very area previously. We just did not have access to crossing this turquoise bridge before. So again, it is significant activating and deactivating certain things. So why don't we use, say, a lightning bolt against some of these water drops, I'm thinking, because they are weak to spells and, at least a little bit, weak to air. Hoping this is enough damage. It is. Good to see. Pods will go next, and they're not bad at dealing damage themselves. As for Slinic, the perforate ability is a powerful attack that rams through armor, lowering defense. It is physical, elemental. So that could be helpful against the angry cods, because they do have some defense, so I'm thinking that's probably the way to go there. Oh, except, you, yeah, it does help when you hit. Razor Leaf, it's going to be hard to use anything other than Razor Leaf here with Gloria, but more than enough to take out a water drop. And then Marduk, 
can you do what Slinnick could not? Sort of, in that you did at least deal damage, but not enough. And it yeah, probably is still best if we were to use a spell, because these guys do have some physical defense. We do go next, though. Fortunately, water elemental, so it heals people. Perforate attempt number two. This time, it certainly worked. Lots of damage as well. Enough to take it out in one hit. Okay. And did we activate Slinix offensive reaction? I'm not sure if we did or not. Fory Beast is the one that we just got from this recent axe. I think if we got rid of, say, Degeneration and put on Fory Beast, then that is probably preferable. Not sure if any of these enemies here are technically beasts or not. Okay, so, there are lots of things we can do here. Hold on just a second. Over here we have... something? Yes. A green switch, so let's flip that. And then also there's a chest over there that I think we have access to at the moment. So let's seize that opportunity while we can. And a whole bunch of doors here that are blocking something. Hard to tell what. Heather, okay, for some MP restoration. Throw that on Gloria. Have we seen a turquoise yet? I'm not sure we have. Notably, it is actually Heather Elemental, not water. So not often that we see Heather Elemental enemies, and therefore couldn't come as much of a surprise that it heals a ton from other damage, but not that we're doing much of that right now. Very resistant to almost all elements, though, other than light, and dark is actually the way to go, really. We don't have many ways to do that, though. So I think that probably means that for Charla, you just lightning bolt everybody? Maybe? I don't think this is going to take anyone out. Yeah, in fact, everyone has so such high magic defenses that that's almost useless. Paddle gas does confuse. Uh oh, on Slinnik as well. Again, Slinnik is fortunately attacking the correct person and immediately sheds the confusion. So we lucked out yet again. So Razor Leaf from Gloria. People are resistant to magic. At least the high orb spawns are. The turquoise is a little bit. Is it worthwhile? To use it on the turquoise. I was thinking that it would probably be best to use Perforate with Slinnick to take this guy out, but of course, then Slinnick got confused, so I don't know. I think maybe a physical attack on the Iorb spawn, because it will be Earth Elemental, yes, so it can take it out one hit. Gem explosion against everyone. Ether Elemental. That's a little scary. Fortunately, no one down here, but Charla is definitely hurting quite a bit after that. So, Marduk, I think might be one of the best damagers against the Turquoise. Your sword at the moment, we could upgrade it, quite frankly. I think we were talking about this a while ago, back in Crimson Peak, where the damage on it is 32, which at the end of Chapter 2 was very good, but now that we're a reasonable way into Chapter 3, not as much so. So, in terms of raw damage, there probably is a better option. If we needed the light elemental component to the Champion Sword, then we might still want to stick with it but I don't think that's terribly relevant at the moment, so probably would still be best for us to swap that over soon. As for Charlotte, though, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. Charlotte's turn. Do you try physical attack yourself? Uh, either way, very little in the way of damage. I think the answer is really perforate here. Definitely. So Slinnick, very useful in that way. And of course, we do get a turquoise from the turquoises. And I'm not sure if we've gotten one of those yet, so let's take a closer look. Oh yes, we have. This is the one that gives Spirit Craft for Solar and Resist Ether as well. So we could, theoretically, put that on someone if we wanted to boost their magic defense. That's five magic defense. That is a ton. But I think for the most part, that is going to be a minor obstacle. The Ether damage is mostly just going to be those turquoises that we fight and not many other enemies that can deal that type of damage. So let's head back. And let's head down the middle right door here. So it will be in this direction, I believe, through this door. And through here, we'll find that, well, oh, for a second, I thought we were actually over here at this door. And I was going to say, well, we're going to get blocked almost immediately. But no, we're down here, in which case we should have access to, at the very least, I would think, several chests, it would seem. 
So let's pick those up. And some of them look rather dramatically placed. Nothing here, though. So there's a chance that some of them may have enemies in them. Just a turquoise this time. So I think we've seen that Slinnick is more than capable of taking them out. So for the most part, we'll just sneak in normal attacks here. Ones that won't really take away any MP, because Perforate is the way to go, it would seem. Yes. However, it costs a lot of MP, and Slinnick does not have a lot of spirit, so does not start off with much MP. Slinnick is actually almost out of all MP at the moment. That could be a bit of a concern. This looks like this has to be a battle, right? This is a very dramatically placed chest in the middle of the room, lots of area around it, so yes, it is. We find water elementals, and I don't think we've seen any of these yet, but we did of course see dark elementals in the Dark Temple, so I suppose it makes sense that there are also water versions of these. They are extremely resistant to water and even 100% resistant to fire, interestingly enough. Definitely have a weakness to earth, and magic is the way to go against them, so I would think that Razor Leaf is probably our best bet. If we have to, we could use something like a physical attack with Marduk or Slinic with Perforate's not going to be terribly effective because that is non-elemental and they have 80% resistance to that. So we'll see how this plays out here. I think we probably still use Lightning Bolts with Sharla, but not going to be a huge factor here. Just a little bit of damage. And Gloria will fortunately get the chance to go before the Water Elementals. Also of note is that with the Dark Elementals in the Dark Temple, they had reactions when we use physical attacks against them. So I'm curious as to whether that happens this time as well. Let's do a little bit of an experiment here. Will they get mad at Slinnick for doing this? The answer is yes, and in fact, I was not ready to react in time for that. However, since they deal water damage and we have more than 100% water resistance on just about everyone, then we actually heal from it, so not the end of the world. Razor Leaf is the primary way we would expect to take them out. And with that, we can take them all out in one round, so no problem at all. Ether of Kings. Okay, that is, I believe, the best MP restoring item. So that's, sure, good to see there. And there is a pathway here, however, let's make sure we take the chest first. More bottles of acid, again, a source of earth damage for people who might otherwise not be able to do that. Plus two boosting spirit ring. I've said it before, not generally a big fan of these. I think there are other ways to boost spirit that are more effective than this, because that's purely spirit and not much else. And then, or let's cross this as well. As for what we'll find on the other side of this bridge, well, we'll have to double check. Seems like there's something down here. An axolotls and iron spawn. So, who do we prioritize here? Well, I think for Charla, the answer is if we were to split the lightning bolt across everyone, we know that it's going to deal almost no damage to the eyeballs. But for the axolotl chiefs, it would deal a reasonable amount, so would we rather split the damage across everyone, or would we rather focus on just one Axolotl Chief? Not entirely sure. Let's try this out first. Still only about 100 damage apiece, so that's not a bunch. Fortunately, the Adelgast does not confuse Gloria there. And the bubble is Slinnick, so no problems there either. Slinnick only has one perforate remaining here, so let's put it to good use. Who would we find it most valuable to use it on? I think probably Naxalogal Chief, because this is probably our strongest attack, and it's not quite enough, unfortunately. Gloria, I think you can probably take out an IR spawn in one hit with a physical attack, because that is Earth Elemental. And if these guys want to use Bubble Breath, that is more than okay. If you want to use physical attacks, though, that's a little bit more concerning. Mardek, you probably finish off either the Axolotl Chief here or the IR spawn. And Charla, with a physical attack, you could probably take this guy out as well. So just one remaining here, and Gloria will have the opportunity to go before it. So we can probably use a Razor Leap to take it out. And unfortunately, Slinnick is all out of MP, more or less, and therefore just a normal attack here, which is still not bad. But Gloria, I think you pretty much have to use a Razor Leap. I don't think her physical attack will be enough. And we probably do want to restore some of Slinnick's MP here, because if we don't, we might find that we find ourselves in a situation in which we very much need it, and we don't have it. So, let's throw on, maybe not a terribly strong MP restoring item, like, don't need to put on an Ether Kings per se, that might be a little bit overkill. 
but maybe just a, a normal editor here to restore it by 100 MP. Well, Slinic only has 50 MP to begin with. That's probably why Slinic went through that MP so quickly. So if we had a Mana Berry, per se, that would probably be preferable. And we do have one. So let's do that. That's almost a perfect fit. And if we go down here, we'll find that we have another bridge and a white switch for us to flip. Which we've not yet seen. So let's head on back. And I think there was one door that was blocked with a white wall previously that we might find ourselves able to go through now. So, we've seen this combination before. The turquoise is tricky, and I think this is probably the exact scenario we were anticipating before. We're going to want that perforate ability on Slinic. And that means that if we ignore the turquoise for now and focus on just the Eye of Spawns for Charla and Gloria and Marduk and lead the turquoise to Slinic, let's use a physical attack here. Not quite enough, unfortunately. Adult Gas on Marduk. He's slow enough that we might be done by the time he takes his turn. Gloria, definitely not the case, though. So that's a little bit more concerning. Let's take out the turquoise with the perforate. It's not quite enough. Uh-oh. Gloria... Fortunately, does choose to attack someone that she can take out. And another one of the gem explosions. Marduk attacks himself. Uh, again, I'm not really sure if I should be hitting those reactions or not, but the confusion is gone at least, so there's that. That might actually be reason for us to put on some of the confusion resistance. Earlier, we were talking about what exact status is best to try to avoid in this place, and it seems like, yeah, we've actually been getting a fair amount of confusion. So, Charla. I think you do also use a physical attack against the Eye Orb spawn. You might be able to take out the Turquoise with it's just a little bit of HP remaining, but it is pretty defensive, so that might be a little bit misleading. And they try to confuse Marduk again. Fortunately, Marduk resists. And does a normal attack work? Yes, okay. No perforation necessary that time. Gloria, if we don't hit the reaction, is doing water damage and therefore actually heals Linux, so on that occasion, definitely did pay off not hitting the reaction. Marduk should be able to take this guy out here, and we're probably going to need to do some healing after this fight here. Gloria, at the very least, needs it. Marduk probably does as well. More turquoises. And mana berries as well. Marduk masters resist water, so good time to do that. And yes, let's apply this heal here on Marduk himself. Gloria, Marduk arguably could use it the second time as well, but I think you have enough HP that that shouldn't be too much of a concern. So let's head back to the main room, and let's see if we can find our way into that other area where, like I said before, I'm pretty sure there was a water... there was a light door, rather, that we were uh, not able to go through previously. However, hmm. Unfortunately, I think it was this door here, and it is currently blocked off by a blue door. So we might still need to find a way to activate that to make our way through. But I think this is a good place for us to wrap up here. Next time we'll see if we can find that blue switch to get ourselves through this door and make our way into the bottom right corner where we've not yet gotten the chance to explore. So I'll see you next time.